You are the most important person in town. You hold your local society together. The men and women in your community who work every day to feed their families depend on you. Without you, people will go hungry, even homeless. There would be civil unrest, riots in the streets, if it wasn't for your constant routine. The very fabric of humanity is woven together by your hands. Can you believe all of this is because of bread? As a baker, you have a responsibility to your community to be able to bake this bread, bake it well, bake it to a certain standard. And in many situations, the baker took an oath in front of the community because this is the most important job in the world. Not just anyone can become a baker. You almost have to be born into the trade. Many, many people started off as an apprentice. And not just anyone can be an apprentice. You really have to be strong enough for this trade. You're carrying around heavy sacks of flour. You're carrying around huge baskets of bread in the streets to sell them. You start off young as a baker. Bakers in a community are part of a guilt. So much so that they even turn out for parades and they're all together and dressed all in the same way in a uniform. And in this guild situation, the bakers in the community have to compete against one another, but also support one another as they work within that community. Why was the baker important? Why didn't people just bake bread at home? Not everyone has an oven in their home. In fact, most people don't have an oven in their home and they certainly can't afford to fire it every day. It takes a lot of fuel to fire up a little tiny oven. The baker has a huge oven. He has to start that oven up in the morning, but it bakes for the entire town. And not just bread, but people will bring other things to the baker to have them bake. You might bring a big cake. You might bring a whole haunch of venison. The customer is everyone in town, from the richest house to the poor house. And it's interesting that there's a loaf of bread that represents each level of society. Whether it's the most refined bread for the rich person's table or the coarsest dark loaf for the poor house. The reason why bread is so important is it's the one thing the everyday man can survive upon. And he doesn't need to cook it. He can just buy it and eat it. And that's it. That's all he really has to have. We will find journal entries where an author will talk about a meal that seems very complete and he will complain about the lack of bread. That's how important it was. As the baker, you're required to bake three kinds of bread for the community. You bake a white bread, sometimes called fine bread. You bake a middling bread, and sometimes it's called middling or just wheaten bread. And then a low class bread, a cheap bread, brown bread, and it was generally called household bread. Here's our fine wheat bread. This is the one everybody wants. And it's sort of a plain bread. It, you expect to put butter on this. It's not full of flavor. This is our wheaten bread, the middling bread, the less expensive bread. And it has that nice wheat flavor. It's a little more dense. It's actually more flavorful. We come down to the very inexpensive household bread. This is the bread poor people can actually afford. It's less than half the price. And it is a dense meal. It is full of flavor. It's got that wonderful bran that comes through, which is the thing that gets thrown out of the white bread. You're getting the full meal in a slice of bread. As the baker, you face many challenges, and one of the foremost is regulation. Bread has been regulated for thousands of years. The Romans regulated bread, and they're regulating many different aspects. Exactly what goes in your bread. Is it white bread? Is it brown bread? Is it household bread? And you're regulating the weight of the bread. Your bread has to weigh a certain amount. 
Your bread also has to be a particular price. And your bread has to be marked. Each and every loaf has to have an initial on it. Who you are as the baker. It also has to say what kind of bread it is, and it might even say how much the bread is supposed to weigh. And if you don't put these marks on your bread, your bread may be forfeit and given to the poorhouse. There are also challenges with seasonality and supply. Bread is very difficult to bake if it's too cold outside. You need to proof your bread that yeast needs to work, and if it's too cold, it just will not rise. Yeast is a problem when it's cold or it's warm. The brewer where the yeast comes from, he's giving you yeast at the best time of year, either in the spring or more likely in the fall. But when it gets to be cold winter time, he's not brewing beer and you don't have a supply of yeast. There were times when yeast was in great demand and it was very difficult to get a hold of. You will have problems getting a hold of flour. We have crop failures. Maybe the weather is cold or wet and the wheat crop is a failure. And the flour that finally comes to you is a very low quality and hardly works for bread at all. The baker has to be quick on his feet. He has to be able to make substitutions still within the law and bake bread for people who want it every single day. If you do not get people the bread that they require, there will be civil unrest and at times even violence against your shop and your person because they want bread now. And there are even bread riots recorded throughout history. It's one of the reasons why bread is regulated so tightly. As the baker, what do you do when you can't get enough flour to bake your bread or it's too expensive? This happens many times, and there are certain things you can do. Most of them, well, they don't quite meet with all the regulations. You can add other kinds of flour in. Maybe you're going to add barley flour or rye flour into your bread. It isn't exactly what the regulations say, but in certain circumstances, it's the only thing you can do. There are other times when you add things into your bread to make them look whiter. So they would add alum to the bread or they would add chalk to the bread. There might be several reasons to do this. Sometimes you're just putting an inexpensive ingredient in and one that weighs a lot so that you can make your bread cheaper. Or if you can't get enough wheat, you might add that chalk to it so that it actually rises better it's against the law. If you get caught, you will be punished. If a baker or brewer be guilty not to have observed the assize for the first, second, or third fault, he shall be fined, except for the offense be grievous and often, and then shall the baker to the pillory. The reality is, is that bakers breaking the law isn't all that common. This profession is one that is very fulfilling. The community needs bread. I just love the crust when it comes out of the earthen oven. It's so different than anything else. You can smell a difference when it comes out of the earthen oven uh -huh. and the texture is different. I think it has to do with that trapped moisture that you just don't get in a modern oven. Bakers were looked up to because of what they provided to the community. You're providing nutrition, fuel for the working man, survival for the poor. What you do is truly the most important job in the world. Well, I don't remember the last time I ate so much bread.